started at Bargood YMCA and I was five years of age. I think I was getting on my mum's nerves a bit, kicking things around the living room and that's where everything started for me. Yeah. Three, two, one. First of all, it wasn't many, if any, girls football teams around where I live and where I grew up. Um, I played for Bargood YMCA boys team until I was 12 years old. But I always played two ages above, so I was playing on a 11 v 11 pitch when I was nine years old against older boys, which were 11. Didn't know there was any women's teams out there, and you know, until for me it was it was America, and that was the dream, and that's the only thing that I knew about women's football. I had trials uh, at Wales under 12s or under 11s. Um, I had saw some people doing step overs that were a bit older than me, so I thought I'm going to try this. And they asked me to come over with the older group and I was 10 years old and I was training with the other 13. So to punch above my weight for a start, this was, it showed a bit about my character, even from a smaller age. Um, how many goals have you scored? For Wales? Um, so I've scored, I'm going to give it a guess, but I think it's 16 or 17 goals and I think it's about 83 caps. On my CV I now have Bristol, Cardiff, Manchester City, Liverpool and now Reading, so I haven't done too bad. What's your nice thing in the national anthem? Great question. It's my favourite song. Some of us get very passionate and sometimes shed a tear because it's the, probably one of the proudest moments you'll probably ever have as a sporting person. We've always said that we're creating something and within Wales and we're creating a ripple effect and for us I think gaining better results and showing how personal we can be and to the fans and having that connection I think is important for us and having that last game at Rodney Parade even though it didn't go to plan for us in terms of our qualification for something bigger than us it was huge and you know I remember like so many messages that everyone had had and the publicity that was around it, I think we started something so much bigger than what we will ever do and we started to leave a legacy, I think. Are you excited for the Euro qualifications for 2020? I am, yeah, because it's not that far away either. So it's only across the bridge, which is obviously now free, which is great. The last campaign was very good for us and to be top of the table and to take England to the last game, I think was very, very, very good. And it was a great experience, but I think for many of us, it will probably be our last, our last tournament. So I'll be pretty old by then, but hopefully we'll get there um, if our bodies let us. But yeah, we're, that's the aim is to get to the Euros so we can all go out with a bang. Hopefully we've highlighted some areas that can improve and people want to join in. And I think that's always been in the back of our minds. It's not always about football for us, it's about growing the game and something a lot bigger. What I would say to you a lot is have a goal in mind. And if you really are serious about playing football at a higher level, you have to make sacrifices. So for me, I missed out on a lot of things that my friends did. Enjoy it, but still have that end goal of I want to be the best and try and be the best that I can be. So work hard. You'll probably make more sacrifices as you get older, but never settle for what you're doing now. There's always chances of learning. So whenever you go to school or you come here, always want to learn. And I still want to learn and I'm 30. You know, at this age, it's not about being the best and winning. It's creating an environment that people will enjoy the thing that they love. And Thankfully now I can come to Caffiri Castle where they've regrown and I think they have over 96 members of you know, girls playing football so I think that's a fantastic achievement for such a small county.